All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of No Man's Sky. As always, I'm Captain Beefy here with the Game Vault, and today we're going to take a look at the Living Ship Post 4.05 Waypoint update. Um, we haven't really looked at it since the Waypoint update at all. There have been some changes, and I basically stripped it down to the basics, and we're going to rebuild it and see what we can come up with. Now, before. I don't remember exactly how many slots there were in it, but now, 120 cargo and 80 in the uh, technology, right? So, it's a pretty pretty big ship. And being an S-Class, of course, it has the four supercharged slots. Now, these are all the technologies that can't be uh, broken down. So, we got them all there. We're going to look at the different ones and figure out which ones we're going to try to build up and make better and so forth and so on. Uh, we've got a butt ton of psychotic eggs here, so we're going to start doing the biogenesis on them. Let's get this stuff out of here. I like the way they stack, man. That's a big help. It really is. So yeah, we're just going to tear all these down, and then we're going to start loading them up and seeing what kind of stats we can get out of there. So I'll work on this, and then I'll come check back with you guys in a minute. All right, so after unwrapping all of our Christmas presents, you can see what we've got here. And it looks like the same thing holds true as before the uh, update. The only S ones you can get naturally are grafted I notes. You can get them in an S or an A. The spewing vents come in an A or a B. The scream suppressor nodes come in a B or a C. And so do the singularity cortex nodes, which looks like there's a much higher chance of a C than a B. Then we go to the pulsing heart nodes and the neural assembly nodes. And these both just come in at a C level. So the first thing I want to test is we're going to test out three. We'll start here on the right and work our way over. We'll test out three of these real quick. I want to evolve them to see if the best of the best evolves into the best of the best, right? So we got launch six, six, and okay. So that's kind of worthless. Let's see if we get any variation here. Seven, okay. We'll just keep playing around here real quick. In fact, if we got to pop them all out, we'll pop them all out. Uh, we're not going to put them in that slug zone. Oh, crap. My bad, guys. All right, let's go back into this. Keep popping them out. All right, that should be enough. So sixes. Oh, there's an 8 in there. Okay. Alright, so we got a 6 here. Let's go ahead and just, whoop, dismantle this one. And this one. Now, where was that 8? There it is. Move the 8 to there. And there's a 7. So those will be the 3 we evolved. We'll go ahead and Get rid of the rest of these. Uh oh. Getting a little stick drift. I'll tell you what, as much as I love this PS5, the controllers with stick drift have a lot to be desired. Um, I am looking forward to that new controller coming out in 2023, the one that has the. Uh, different stick assemblies you can 
use, so that might make things a little bit better if they're <clears throat> exchangeable. Alright, so here we go. Six, seven, and eight. This will be easy enough to evolve. So at B level, we get 15, 15, and 15. Okay. It's completely irrelevant. So we got 20, 17, and 20. Okay. So now we've got automatic recharging enabled. 20, 20, and 20. So it <coughs> all three of those gave us the same result in the end. That's good to know. So moving forward, we won't have to uh, worry so much about the different levels of these things. Um, so let's do the slimy muscle nodes now and see what's up. Alright, so let's pop off a few of these and see what kind of options we have here. So it's basically, okay, so you got one and two. And we'll try to evolve. Okay, so we'll pick three different ones again and just take a look at them to see uh, what kind of benefit we get out of them. So here's a two, a two, a seven boost. Pulse drive. So there's, it looks like there's up to three different options on here. So maybe we'll find one with three. Maybe when they evolve, we'll get three. I don't know. I will take a look here and see how this works out. Oh, cool. We got some bad weather. What else is new? I don't know why I built here or work on this planet. Well, I like it. It's a little paradise planet. Okay, so we got one, 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 one. Okay, there's a deuce. Another one with two. Two. Alright, so none of these have three different options on us. So let's go ahead and we'll dismantle the ones with one. kind of curious to see do they um, will they develop three at an S level or an A level or something like that that's the real curiosity here and will their stats pretty much be even when they get there which I'm also curious about so alright looks like we got four of them So let us begin. So we're still at two. Still at two. All right, now we hit three at S level. And at S level we have a boost of 12, maneuverability eight, pulse drive 20. 17, 20, and 24. So there is some variation when we get to this higher level. That's good to know. Uh, so this is maneuverability. All right, so this is for the pulse drive. So I usually go for maneuverability on the pulse drive. My highest maneuverability looks like it's 17. Well, we actually got a couple more of these we can pop out. Let's do that and see if we can beat that. Now that we know there's a little more variation on this one than that other one. It definitely warrants using a few more of these just to see what's up. Alright, 
so we got a single. Tell you what, if we don't have any doubles, we don't. So we're going to evolve these just to see if they go to three. And they do. Okay. So basically, you can use whatever ones you want. All right, maneuverability six, maneuverability seven, maneuverability 12. So our best maneuverability is still 17. So that's the one. We'll put this up with the keepers over here for now. And the rest of these will disassemble, and then we'll move on. All right, so next up, we got the Singularity Cortex node. This is our warp drive. So let's go ahead and pop out a few of these real quick. And this is where it gets a little interesting because we do have some B-level ones as well as a bunch of C-levels. So we'll get to see how this works out. I'll pop out two stacks of these. And then the four. And we'll do a comparison. And if you're wondering how I got all these, it's a basic um, duplication glitch that you use the uh, portable refiners for. You basically lay down a portable refiner, put something, anything, in the uh, hopper there to be processed. And then you start stacking more portable refiners on top of it to where that little part in the middle that you see that spins around when it's operating, where they kind of touch each other, you pretty much just stack them right on top of each other, and then start picking them up. And it will, what it does is it takes whatever you put in that hopper and it duplicates it into every single hopper in that stack. So if you put 10 things in one and then you stack nine more on top of it, you're going to come away with 100. So that's pretty cool. Alright, well this is hyperdrive, so I imagine, yeah. The only other thing I can think is we'll get efficiency out of it, so let's evolve this to an A and then an S. There we go. A and S. And we'll do the C all the way up real quick. Alright, well, I'm going to go through all these pop them out and see what comes out best and we'll check back with you alright so this is the best one we got out of the lot it's uh, 262 in the hyperdrive range and that came from a C level one it didn't come from a B level one even so again it doesn't look like the original matters too much here it just looks like uh, when you upgrade them that's what makes the difference so we went ahead and kept that one disassembled all the other ones and you may say, well, why didn't you keep the three best? Well, we're going to dupe the best one at the very end. So if you stick around, I'll show you that little dupe glitch. If you want to, you know, use that method to maximize your ship or make yourself a little extra money or nanites or whatever. In any case, you can, you know, you can dupe anything from tainted metal to um, stasis devices. And now with the different settings in the game, you don't have to do that, but... If you've got your game set up in such a way that it's locked and you don't have the ability to change your settings and you really need money to buy that S-Class um, freighter that you found and fell in love with, well, that's one way to do it. I mean, that's if that's up to you if you want to do that, you know. For It does take some of the fun out of the game, I'll tell you that. It's great for doing videos like this because you can test everything out and all that and apply these tests elsewhere. Um... You know, on, on a regular um, game mode or something like that. All right, so we'll get one up to a level S, and I have a feeling this is just going to be a solid 30 across the board. Yeah. Shield strength is usually like that with these things. All right, so we'll be back, and we'll look at the spewing vent node next. All right, so we unwrapped a whole bunch of these spewing vent... Um, nodes here the 15 or 16 yeah 16 a class and then the b class so we're just going to upgrade a couple of them real quick to compare they do have it looks like three stats heat dispersion fire rate 
and damage, right? I don't see any others. Alright, so the goal is going to be to get the best out of that. So I'm going to go ahead and unwrap all these and we'll see which one worked out to be the best of the lot. And we'll keep that one and then we'll move on to the last and final thing, the grafted eye node, which will be cool. Alright. Alright, for, so for the spewing vents, um, everything I unwrapped had a 3% fire rate and a heat dispersion <coughs> at S level. Everything else had uh, the damage varied between 6 and 8. I had 3 with 8. Most of it was 6%. Uh, there were a few that were 7, 2 or 3. So, you know, again, I'm not doing hundreds of these right now. I could sit here and do this all day long and do hundreds and find the absolute best. But at least you get an idea of what it is. Maybe it goes up to 10. Maybe if I did it for another hour, I'd get 10%. I don't know. All right, let's look at the grafted eyes now. Grafted eyes impact a couple different things. Shield recharge on impact and heat dispersion or damage so there's three things so it really looks like even at S level we did 20 of them only two things will pop up so here here comes a point where you have to really make a decision do you want to um, deal more damage and disperse the heat or do you want to recharge your shields? And that, that's where you'll make the choice there. So I'm thinking damage is probably the most important thing. The 24% I've seen, 26%, that one stands out a little bit. Uh, let's look at what else, 24, 26. We'll pull the 26s out and then we'll make our decision based off of that. I always pick like, what do I want most from something and in this case I'd prefer to have more damage because you know is that 26 yeah it just makes more sense to me to be able to inflict more damage if I inflict more damage and kill the enemy quicker then I really don't have to worry about recharging my shields right all right so I'm gonna bust I'm gonna let's see what do we got here dispersion 86 84 and 80 so this right here is the big winner we'll pop it up top here get rid of the rest of these and then we'll uh, move on as far as distributing these things out putting them where they belong and then looking at these little guys so we'll be right back all right so these three little guys popped up too and you only get one of these I guess um, whenever you're equipping a ship so let's pop these out evolve them and just put them in here for now and get them out of the way We'll figure out where they go later on. But as you can see, they affect different things like um, economic and conflict data, recharging the neural assembly quicker, so that's a good one. Uh, blah, 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 uh, blocking cargo probes. So those are kind of like individual little things that you'd add on that you have available for your regular ship. Now, for the six things that we want to enhance with these modules here, uh, we have three of each for three of them. Now these we want to go ahead and copy and dupe so we have three of each of the best. So I'll show you how to do that right now. First things first, we're using the uh, triangle here to store technology, whatever it is on your system. You just store the technology. I'm going to pass it onto the exosuit just for the ease of doing it. And we're going to need three each, right? So we'll pop out our first portable refiner. And we'll pop one in there. You see how those middle parts touch there? You see it hanging down in the middle? Boom. Boom. Pick them up. You'll see over on the right, we got three lobe actuator nodes. Do it again. This time with the chromatic pupil node. And you just line it up. It's a little easier in first person if you want to. If you're having trouble with that, you can always switch it to first person. We've done so much of this that you'll probably do it in, from orbit. Who the hell knows? Okay. So here's the last one: the crystalline chamber node. 
and of course the weather's crap again, but that's alright, we're going to be back inside the ship here in just a second. We're looking at it from within. And now you can see, let's arrange them real quick. We've got three, three, and three, right? So we can go ahead and evolve them, and drop them into the ship. And let's just drop them over here for now. I don't want to, uh, so we're gonna have to use those special boosted nodes to, or the boosted slots to really make this ship pop and see how awesome we can make it, you know? I know it's a little tedious and all, and now if you're not looking to dupe anything or anything like that, the best way to get these upgrades for your ship, you know, these uh, spawning sacks and whatnot, is to run missions with your frigates that have living frigates involved with them and they'll bring back the spawning sacks and whatnot so you can not only increase the size of your inventory but also get more of these different things that you can uh, you know all these different uh, upgrades and whatnot all right so what do we want to start with first let's start with some damage dealing right so we'll get all this crap down a little bit and we're gonna look at there's two spots we have set up where we can probably use maybe probably yeah a couple boosted nodes each you got two right next to each other here two right next to each other there so first off is the grafted eye right if we pop that right in the middle and do like that Unfortunately, it doesn't give us a DPS on that. It really didn't do any... Did it? Yeah, damage potential. Anyways, but look at that. These two, 132 and 32, that's a pretty solid heat dispersion and a lot more damage, so that's pretty awesome. The other one is the... Uh, not the scream suppressor, the spewing vents. Here we go. So this is going to be a little different. We're not going to be able to take advantage of the adjacency bonus with all three of them if we use that, but look at that. Damage 10%, fire rate 28%, and of course, heat dispersion 29 So, pretty big jump, huh? That's not bad. All right, so we've used all four of those up real quick. Not a big deal. Um, throw the neural assembly right here and just drop that there, and now we've got our neural assembly uh, for taking off and all that and which one this one charges it up quicker so we'll throw it in there get the adjacency bonus you see it lights up blue now we got all of that the scream suppressor is basically the defense network so we'll throw that up here so we got our shields up to 283 Again, nothing spectacular. These ships aren't anything amazing compared to, um, you know, some of your regular ships, but they are just cool as hell looking. Put those up there, right? Cargo. Yeah, those are. All right. Next up is the pulsing heart. This is the pulse jump, so we can just throw that basically wherever we want here. Watch our maneuverability. It dropped. It was at 430. Now it's at 477. And we can go right here. This is our warp drive. And we've got a warp range of 1826. So, and look at all this extra room. I just have a feeling we're going to get more organs for this soon or the ability to do more stuff. Now, there is other stuff we can install in here. We can go ahead and put in the atlas figurine if we want to you know so we can see it on our dashboard if we're flying in first person view and then we can give it a cool little green trail right and now the ship is ready I think at least to take up into space 
and let's try and uh, cause some trouble. Pick a fight with something, mine some asteroids, do some other stuff. Alright, well here's some asteroids, so we'll check out the, uh, these are the spewing vents. And once again, like we did in the last video on the living ship, they're kind of like the equivalent of the infra knife in my opinion. We're just going to overload them real quick, see how long it takes for them to come back. Takes quite a lot longer to come back than the infra knife. And now this is kind of like the pulse beam in a way, but I think it does more damage. Look at that thermal load. Ooh, back in there. I didn't think I moved my finger. What are we doing here? Nothing. Yeah, I'm not moving my finger off and it shuts down for some reason. I don't know if that's a visual glitch or what. It doesn't look like we can overload it, so... There's that. Hey, ship. There we go. Right, we got a hostile trade ship. Let's see how quick we can take them out with this. So it's pretty solid. But now we got what we really wanted, which was Sentinels, so let's get out of here. And we'll fight some Sentinels for a minute and see how we hold up against them. Um, just out of curiosity. Yeah. That weapon is a solid weapon. We're gonna get more? Yep, we're gonna get more. I'm not going to take this all the way to the uh, frigate. I'm really... No need to go that far with it. Uh, there we go. Dealing some pretty good damage here. We're going to switch out and try to recharge our shields, even though they're not down much. We'll just see... Yeah, that worked pretty good. Got our shields right back in line. Alright, well that goes... I guess we'll go ahead and wrap up this video now. Thanks for joining me. As always, I'm Captain Beefy with the Game Vault, and this has been another episode of No Man's Skies. We look at the living ship and how um, it's been affected by the waypoint updates, which doesn't seem to be any big effects other than the size of it, you know, and the capacity for things. Everything else looks pretty much the same. So nothing new there. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel, ring that bell for notifications, and don't forget to leave a comment and a like on the video down below. Share us on social media. That is always appreciated. We'll see you next time.